Aloha again. It's Mark Fisher here on peeling our Scientology. Well, sorry, no. Scientology stories peeling the onion. We changed our name. And I'm here with Janice Gillum Grady. How you doing, Janice? Aloha, Mark. <laughs> Aloha, everyone. To, we're still in Hawaii. That's uh, right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. And we're, we've got our guests coming back for a second time. Mark, do you anything you want to say before I introduce her? No, no, you go ahead. Okay, and, uh, you know, right we, we've recorded this is part two. You know, go ahead. You can record, yep. you know. Part two with the surfer lady from Hawaii. Um, and she's been my, she was my tutor when I was 11 years old. And we've stayed in touch all these years, 50 years, more than 50 years. Anyway, so let's have San, uh, Candy Swanson. Hi. Aloha, Candy. Aloha. <laughs> you look beautiful. Sunday. <laughs> Love the flower. Oh, I feel like I'm in Hawaii still, always. <laughs> always My heart's uh, hey, in Hawaii. Hawaii is a state of mind, you know? Yeah. It's just you got to, you know, be Hawaiian all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, where we left off last, we were talking about, you know, how you got into Scientology, how you ended up, um, you know, becoming Janice's and, and the kids' tutor and, and guardian, basically, you know, taking care of them on the ship. And then you then you were taken off to go to the advanced organization in Edinburgh, and then the uh, uh, what was it the flight to freedom to get uh, people from the United States into Scotland rather than the UK rather than England because they were banned. And then we had, the last story we told was when you came back to the ship and you met L. Ron Hubbard for the first time. And so um, we're, we're ready to carry on. I understand you've got another story you wanted to tell about L. Ron Hubbard. Sure. Um... We were in a terrible storm. Janice will probably remember this. And I was the bosun's mate on Tony Dunleavy's watch. And it was during the night. And Hubbard was in his study. And by then I had learned you have to say yes, sir, and all of this stuff. So on the deck, they got, no, the, what's that called? The main the place where everyone is. The bridge. The, the, ship. Bridge. the bridge. There the bridge. we go. <laughs> so um, they got stuck between manual and automatic. And the ship was going round in circles. And there were giant waves, like 30-foot waves, breaking over the bow. And on the side of the ship, it was very terrifying because the ship could tip over in that stuff. It's a flat bottom cattle boat. It didn't have the normal bottom to it, right? You guys are aware of that. So yes, it wasn't yes. a ship to, ship to be out there in the, in the real ocean. So um, Tony says, go get the Commodore. Tell the Commodore what's going on. And uh, he told me whatever it was. So I ran to Ron's study and opened the doors. And I'm supposed to say, sir, and I go, help, we've got, <laughs> we're stuck. We're stuck between something and something. And I don't know what's going on, but you have to come to the bridge. Please help. And Hubbard gets up out of his chair and he puts on a yellow raincoat and a yellow rain hat. And he walks around the desk and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get it because I'm not calling you, sir. That's what I'm thinking. He puts his arm around me. I'm under his right arm. Let's go check this out. And we walk up to the bridge and he points my attention at the pedometer. He said, just watch that little ball there. If it hits something, let me know. So my attention went on to this machine right inside the door and he starts bellering at Tony Dunleavy, Ray Thacker, the people on the watch really loud and he puts his mouth to the pipe communication thing that goes down to the engine room and yeah. he yep. yells boom 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 and suddenly the ship started working it it went into manual they were at, in automatic and they wanted to put it into manual so they could control it and he was up there and he just bellered at everybody on on the bridge but it went right through me because he had my attention focused there to me it was a wonderful wonderful story i was petrified everybody on the ship 
that I ran into around Hubbard, they were just like shaking in their boots, you know? And every time I saw Hubbard, he was straight across at me. It was like, hiya, you know, just yeah. beaming and grinning and happy to see me, which made me feel completely normal and yay, you know, I'm here. I was 21 years old to 23 years old on the ship and just, uh, it was a great experience for me. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, you know, having you, cause you were a trained auditor at that time, you'd done the briefing course and all that. What was it like? What was your impressions of Hubbard? I mean, I know, you know, most people, I don't know, our viewers were never in, right? But what, I mean, I was a teenager when I was in and I just did my auditing and all that, but I really wanted to meet him. You know what I mean? It's like I ah. looked up to him at that time. I didn't know what he was really like, but what was yeah. it like for you? Cause you'd done all this training and, and done auditing and things like that. What were your impressions? Well, I was him? auditing Quentin, Quentin's uh -huh. Hubbard's son. So Hubbard was, was doing the case supervision every day. And so I'd go into session and then Hubbard would case supervise and I'd write the things down in session. It was a real closeness, a wonderful feeling of somebody really cared about what was happening in the session with me, with his son. It wasn't this, you know, standard blah, blah, blah. It was, it wasn't regimented. It was just be there in the seat with the person in front of you. And that's what I'd always studied were the original, the original tenants, you know, to me is mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're golden. They're still mm -hmm. just great. They didn't just come from Hubbard, by the way, 1965, right. he did KSW keeping Scientology working and said, he's the only source. This is all his. But before that, the way I see it in the 50s up till 65, it was a group effort. Everyone was involved. Everybody contributed. Do you understand? It was mm -hmm. not one person in charge. So this leads me to my story of um, why I left the ship. Okay. If you'd like to hear it. I don't know if Janice Absolutely. knows this I'd, or not. I'd love to. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, um, Balkasin Farage had been demoted. He was CS5 Commodore staff to do with tech. And Mary Sue, Sue Pomeroy kept running between me and Mary Sue Hubbard. And I got this message saying, Hubbard says you've only been involved for two years. You did a whole lot, Candy Swanson. But blah, blah, blah. So then I said, yeah, but I was Candy Chalif for the two years before that. And apparently Mary Sue told Hubbard, but she's Candy Chalif too. And he couldn't believe it's the same person. I did so much as Candy Chalif and I excelled. You know, I was just flying, taking off and doing whatever needed doing. I felt really good about the whole experience. Were you still married to Ira or, or no, Ira Chalif? No, we divorced. We agreed to divorce in Heathrow Airport before 2001 Space Odyssey on our way up to, oh, okay. to Edinburgh with the group. We right. went aside and talked about it and decided we were divorcing. So I changed to my maiden name. Right. Candy Swanson. Yay. But what there was happened, always only one candy. There was yeah, only yeah, one candy. Yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I ended up being nominated or I'm, I'm going to become the CS5 position, Commodore Staff 5 that Belkacin used to have. And the night before... I was going to be placed on that post. I had an epiphany while I was sleeping that all of Scientology, Sea Org, all of this was a pyramid and there's only one person at the top and that was Hubbard. I went, oh my goodness, I don't want to be there because the people closest to that source are the ones that were shoot falling down and, you know, so I wrote yep. up this thing that Sue Pomeroy took to Mary Sue. Mary Sue gave it to Ron. 
saying, thank you very much, but I'd like to go play my own game. Well, my game is ethics, integrity, honesty. And I said, Hubbard, you've got this game covered. His was technology. But to me, if you don't have the integrity, what's the use of all that technology, you know? I really felt that Hubbard was trying his best from everything I saw to develop a technology to help himself with his own problems. But because of the integrity, you know, integrity, the wholeness, um, he never was able to really achieve and help get himself help. So that's how I saw what this whole game was about. And I said, I want to go do my own game. And I, Loy Young and I, she devised a way for us to get off the ship. She had her, she wrote to her mom, how is Poochie? And Poochie had died when Loy was a little kid. So her mom went crazy, rushed into the Folo organization, Hannah Eltringham. Get Loy, I want my daughter, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly we had this order for Loy to be gotten off the ship. And Loy said, well, Candy has to come too. My mom knows Candy. And she got me <laughs> off and we got off the ship. We're back in LA. I go into Hannah Eltringham's office. I, I, I have a quick question. Who's yep. Poochie? Who's Poochie? It was her dog when she was a little kid. Her dog died. So their code was, Whenever oh, Loy is oh. going to say, Poochie, mom, that means help. Get me out of here. Oh, so yeah. Loy Young set, set Loy up Young. a code with her mother that yeah. if she yeah. ever said uh, something about Poochie, that meant mom, come and get me or come and make a stink. Was oh, her mother not you. a Scientologist or what? No, of course not. <laughs> no. Right. Wow. So, that, was, that was forward thinking. <laughs> I know. Wasn't that amazing? And I would have never gotten off the ship without that. Because Belkacine okay, no, no. Farage was after me and Loy. He was doing his best, you know, not to allow me to be put on post there. Okay, now Janice, let me ask you. So why yeah. would so did Hubbard approve that or or what happened? Like, I mean, obviously something, you know, they were gonna put you on uh, you know, CS5, but do you anybody remember, you know, what happened and why it was approved? Well, you know, when someone leaves the ship or wants to leave the ship. They were not used. I mean, only Bruce Welsh was the person that was locked up and stopped from leaving. And we've covered that in other videos. But usually if a person says they want to leave, there was a flag order that was a standing order that the person that they had 24 hours to get that person through whatever they had to go through and off the ship. Hubbard did not want people on the ship who didn't want to be there. Uh -huh. And That's so if, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because even my dad petitioned, you know, to leave the Sea Org, and it was approved. Wow. When he was on the ship. So it was different yeah. than, than later when we were in the Sea Org on land base, because if you said, I want to leave, they were like, no, you're not leaving. You're, you know, you're going exactly. to the RPF or no. there's something wrong with you, right? Oh, well, it's well even, yeah, and even later at the Gold Base in the early, early 80, um, Hubbard sent down a thing saying, there's an amnesty for any, anybody who wants to leave, they can leave, get them out in 24 hours. And so people were, and with no penalties, no freeloader bill, no nothing. And so wow. people took that and left. And they then became public Scientologists, or you never heard from them again, you know. Um, so it was a very different than trying to hang on to every person you had to hang on to right. because that was a body on a job. You know, very right. different atmosphere on that. But there were some people, though, in the earlier SEAL days where, you know, it was considered you wanted to leave, then you're a suppressive person. And there are some of people being stopped then as well. So it, it really depended on the person and the circumstances at that time. But yeah, in general, Janice, well, in ahead, general they were allowed to leave. And then Janice in 82 or 83, when Hubbard was off the line, when he was gone in hiding, the, the order came down that if anybody left the gold, but you know, the international the secret base, they were to yep. be declared a suppressive person. 
That exactly. was ordered by him, but that was like in 82, 83, right? Yes. When, when yes. he was in hiding. And so that became the policy then that if well, he left, even, he would be declared. But mm. even when he was in hiding, when he was first in hiding in 1980 or 81, that's where it was like, get rid of anybody who doesn't want to be there. Right. And then later on, a few years later, and you got to realize too, and this isn't to justify for Hubbard, but this is to point out, Miscavige was the communication line to Hubbard, and the reports were all coming from him, and those were all unverified. So God knows what was being sent up, because that was yeah. one of my biggest issues, was not being able to get to Hubbard to tell him what was going on, and that, therefore, I was disaffected. Right, but and then also, I know, and then, go ahead. I'm sorry. I know that like the treatment of the mission holders, that would never have happened if the report had come from me as to what was going on, because right. I would have reported it very different to what Miscavige did as no, he was the big right. savior and came in. So LRH's reactions all depended on who reports what. Yep. Right. And then the other part of it, Janice, too, and we don't know for sure, but he was becoming more and more paranoid because he was getting getting old and sick. So that yes. also could have changed his viewpoint where he got much harsher uh, in regards to those things. And then he would just take whatever you know, Miss Scavage said would feed his paranoia and then he would uh -huh. just act out, you know. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he was a senior citizen and you know how gullible senior citizens are. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I was a senior citizen. <laughs> but this yeah. is back in 1970 right. when I left the ship. And I got to Hannah Eltringham in Los Angeles. And I said, you're not going to believe this, but Hubbard let me off the ship and go do my own game. And she said, yes, I do. And she pulled out this flag order. Janice, if you ever can find this for me. I would be very indebted because I would love to see it. it. At the top of the flag order, it was black on white, and it said Candy Swanson. And the first sentence said, Candy Swanson epitomizes the supreme test of a Thetan in her ability to make things go right. Wow. Is that enough words that, that I... The word Thetan, maybe someone wouldn't understand what that means. It means a spirit, the person themselves. So it was such an acknowledgement. And then she read off the rest of it to me. It was a whole page, Love Ron at the bottom. I would love to have that if we could ever find yeah. it. No bad. Yeah. Hannah says, I believe you. Look, here's easy. This is <laughs> you. And she said, why don't you go just Check in with uh, Yvonne Gillum on your way out because she needs some help starting Celebrity Center. So I went next door. They were two different houses on Beacon Street. I went to the next door and Yvonne's there and I end up being her celebrity auditor with no case supervision. The people paid me directly, the celebrities, back then in the very beginning. 25 bucks an hour, they paid me 25 bucks an hour. I did everybody's sessions and I was there for three years at $5 an hour, not on staff, not Sea Org. There you have it. Okay. It <laughs> let me, let me, I just want to show, just be finish off the story about you leaving the ship. I want to show this photo that we didn't show before. Everybody here, this is Loy Young in the Sea Org uniform on the left. She's the one who said Pookie, right? <laughs> and then that's you that's on the right. right in the Sea Org member uniform. And this is, uh, this is in the early 70s, right? Um, I anyway. believe that, no, no, it's actually the late 60s, 1969, okay. before we each went back to the ship. And this, I think, might be Detroit organization. Every org we went to in the United States, we took a photo with the staff and we did a technical mission. We were just doing really wonderful acknowledgments and helping people. Okay. That was well, anyway, I just wanted to show this because that's yep. Loy Young, the one who had the, the mm -hmm. uh, magic word Poochie. for her mother saying, Pookie. <laughs> died and uh you know get me out of here <laughs> yeah, yeah how's poochie you know, 
<laughs> her mom, her mom actually lived to her nineties, and one That's of my right. events, one of my events here in Vegas, uh, Bob and Loy Young brought her with them, and she had a blast. She was up there dancing away in her ninety years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was great, really great. Yeah. Okay, so so the, so then you went, you you left the ship, and then you went to Celebrity Center. That was just the beginnings, right? Had they the even had they even opened up a building yet, or what was the deal? Well, if you show the picture of that one, that's me on the right, Yvonne, Janice's mom, and yeah. Frank Dunn, my boyfriend at the time. Um, found that building on 8th Street, the wooden building for Yvonne, and Gelda Kitchen to his left was my best friend at the time. Now, and she heard, now people now would know her as Gelda Midoff. Yeah. 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 And Mary this to is Ray 1970, 1970, a long time ago. But the beginnings are just wonderful. You know, the beginning days of Celebrity Center were great. Yeah. Now, now that old building, I got both your questions. I'm not sure. Oh, right. I just said, were you still considered a Sea Org member? No, I wasn't. Hannah L. Tremingham verified I okay. wasn't. But okay. in three years, I, I finished working at Celebrity Center and I took expanded Dianetics course at LA Org. And Mary Sue came out with this free loaders thing. You're a freeloader, yo money, blah, blah, blah. I got a letter saying I owed $10,000 for all the training I had. And I just did, boom, F you, paid off the $10,000. I had a field practice going. And um, about 15 of my clients followed me when I left Celebrity Center. So I did give a wonderful person over to Yvonne. Cassie, Cassie Warner. Cass Warner. Yeah. That's Cole, yeah. Cole Howes' mother. Mother, right. yeah. Well, I I had done all, all of her auditing up through grade four expanded. And then I took her in to meet Yvonne. And I said, here you go, Yvonne. We made up for the 15 people that didn't want to <laughs> stay without, you know, when I left. Um, can I ask you, Candy, because we don't have many people on you know too often that were trained auditors and did processing of people right so what from your point of view when back then when you were doing processing and things like that what was it like as an auditor you know dealing with people who were getting processing okay so at advanced organization in los angeles that's where Bill Roberts, Robertson says, well, what do you want to do now, Candy? So I said, I guess I better be an auditor because I'm a class six auditor. So I did. My, I was a review auditor making all the square ball bearings round so they could flow through the whole system. And I just really enjoyed helping people. Well I, I guess I what I, I, I let me let me sure reframe my mean. question. My question yeah. was more like, look, I audited people. I wasn't a highly trained auditor, but I would see them change before my eyes. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like literally, I would do whatever the processes were that we were doing, and this reinforced for me that I actually was helping people and improving their lives. And I just wanted to get what was your experiences like when you would actually audit people oh, and get them through their grades and things like that like what was it like for you as an auditor i still am auditing i've never stopped i'm a uh, what did hubbard call that a uh, cracker jack that's me i'm a cracker right. jack auditor i'm super <laughs> duper and mostly i allow the person to help themselves i mean i go by all their original tech no no regimen or anything just what are you interested in what are you sitting in let's go and uh that's how hubbard audited i believe in the beginning yeah it wasn't you, it, it wasn't a rote thing but you basically are talking for the you're money. In communicate you're in communication with the person across from sure. you right and sure. you're letting them you're you're asking them questions and letting them look and then yeah. you know mm -hmm. and then you're guiding them right 
Yeah, but not with any form of preconceived ideas or you have right. to do this. You have to float your needle in 15 minutes. Whoa. Yeah, no, no, we no. go for the case. We really work. It's, it's hard work and they get huge gain, huge wins. The cheese is good. The trap, not so good. The cheese in the trap. Not that we're all nice, but of mice and men. Somebody wrote about. Yeah, well, what I'm trying of... to what I'm trying to explain is like when I audited somebody, like I would see them like, literally change before my eyes. And but when right. you got through whatever it was they were getting through, they would be feel they'd be floating. I mean, you'd literally yeah. call it a floating needle, but they would be ecstatic. They would be like, "Wow!" You know, they were like, "Wow!" I'd never realized that. You know what I mean? It was like a really fantastic thing, and you really it's felt like wonderful. you were changing. And, and you yeah. really made you feel like you were changing their lives for the better, right? Well, I helped Karen Black, the actress, attributed our auditing to her curing her bronchitis. She would sit in session and spit all around her, <laughs> the bronchitis stuff. And then when it stopped, she went, oh, we just cured bronchitis. She wrote a success story, <laughs> Candy Can Move Mountains. I mean, I just... <laughs> it, it, to me, auditing is what it's all about, really. You know, it's, yeah. it is. A now pleasure. you're not a you're not a Scientologist now. I never was a Scientologist. I always refused that label. I me, I use Scientology, and that's what I said from the very beginning. It's a cult. I am not into believing in things. I just do. You know, right? Just be do and have it. So, okay. yeah, I'm not, I've never been labeled as a Scientologist, in my estimation. Okay. But you still yeah. use the technology to help people. Well, I've developed a whole lot of technology based on the original technology from the 50s and 60s. Right. Okay. I do not do anything where... Here's what Alan Walters told me, and yeah. he had been solo auditing, you know, auditing themselves in the chapel at St. Hill. They were going after their own goals, problems, mass processes, GPMs, and he was getting a lot of gain, a lot of win. And Hubbard came in one day and he says, okay, everybody, I have solved it. Everyone put away your things where you're all doing mine. And he gave them, this is what you're doing. Alan Walters said from that day on, that was the end of any game in Scientology auditing for him. That was right. it. It was someone else's idea for everybody. I mean, that's not what Scientology was about, you know? Right. Yeah, Alan actually became one of the biggest mission holders and then formed his own sort of technology that... He People and I did going both that. For. I lived in okay. Dallas, Texas when my kids were little, and we developed an e-meter for him, and we did a lot of knowledgeism technology, which I use to this day. It's great tech. It's not that what's written, it's how you use it. Do you understand? I educate my clients so that they're able to use the tech on themselves. Now, let me and ask you, so... Obviously, you left organized Scientology at some point then because... And I left they Celebrity have... Center. And when was that? What, around what time? 1972. I did. I paid off my $10,000 freeloader debt uh, in 73 and took the expanded Dianetics course. They were putting cameras into the auditing room when I was just graduating that course. Mm -hmm. And I said, what are you doing there? He said, well, we're putting cameras in to the audit. At Celebrity, at Celebrity oh, Center, they were doing Los that? Angeles organization. Oh, LA Los Art. Angeles. Yeah, that's where okay. I took the expanded Dianetics course. I met Bob Thomas there. I mean, I've had a lot of very intimate relationships with these wonderful men that are larger than real life. So I learned a lot from them to do with the technology, too. Okay, because I had not heard of cameras in the auditing rooms at Celebrity Center. No, no, I don't know. Okay. Not in my auditing room. But it was, it was at LA is, York. Okay. And this is after um, Celebrity Center, 1973. And I said, sayonara, okay. goodbye, I'm done. And I didn't okay. 
I was never declared. I never promoted it. I just kept doing what I was doing. And for me, I kept doing this. Scientology went 180 degrees, way over there, going the opposite direction, trying to control people, tell people what to think, what to do, and you could not yeah. communicate freely. Scientology is all about communication. So there was right. something wrong. And being free. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. did you ever, were you ever fair gamed? Like, did they ever come Never. after you? No. Because oh, no. No, Hubbard, even when, I was were, his, even when you were doing I was Hubbard's golden Alan. auditor. I was the top <laughs> missionaire, you know, I was, but I never badmouthed Scientology. Right. I have no ill will. I feel everyone is, you know, doing the best they can do. Everybody's got a case and I've developed my own technology to do with helping um, people, couples headed to divorce that want to save their marriage. I specialize and have helped many couples save save their marriages. Okay. Yay. Okay, good. Good. Yay. <laughs> oh, so, I saw some of the photographs more recent. Well, especially the one with Bent and when we went to Greece with Janice. Yeah, hold on yep. a second. Also, I'm looking to pull that one up here because it's at the front here. They're kind of out of order. Uh, here we well, go. Um, yeah. That was in Corfu. Yes, yes. Yeah. But explain in, who uh, that is. It, that people, our viewers don't know who that is. So go ahead. Yeah, that's Ben Cardin, who in our last video with uh, Candy, he came and sat in her lap in the middle of the interview. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, oh, I put it back up there. And I showed his book uh, in the yeah. last interview, uh, Messiah or Madman which uh, he wrote with L. Ron Hubbard Jr., who many people know of him as Nibs, Hubbard's first son. But yeah, this was in Corfu, which was an old port for me, for where the Apollo was, or the Royal Scotsman. And um, in 19, uh, sorry, in 2022, Candy, Bent, myself, and um, what, there were 16 of us who went and we did, um, a trip around Greece. Yes, Candy. Yes, Candy. Um, ben actually wrote the book originally with Sarah. He interviews Sarah. None of this is for public knowledge, but I'm going to just say he did not write it with Nibs Hubbard. It was Sarah Hubbard's second wife. And then he took the manuscript to her and she got to the chapter. He says, sex, drugs, and rock and roll in his book. And she closed the book. She said, we will have none of that. And that was it. She wouldn't do the book with him. So then he ended up with Nibs Hubbard doing the book, but he'd already written all the chapters. He has wonderful stories that Sarah actually told him to do with Hubbard. Let, let me ask you a question about, about the book and all that. Because Ben Cord and also for anybody who was a longtime Scientologist, he had the, one of the largest Scientology missions in Riverside, California. It was bigger than most organizations in Scientology. Yeah. And he was, he was, you know, getting a lot of people into Scientology and that type of thing. But did he leave when the whole mission holders thing happened in 1981, 82, or did he leave before that or what happened? Um, the finance police came into right, that's 82. his center in 1978. And that would have been the Guardian's Before, office then, not the finance police. No, the finance it was police the finance exist. police from the Sea Org. But that was that 82. Was some, he said. It was probably some missionaries, but the finance police did not exist until after the mission holder conference where they were mutinying. Okay, so the point, as far as I know, because this would be hearsay, and Bet right. cannot speak for himself. I understand. Right, with he has an agreement, nothing. Um, what's that called, Janice? Non disclosure, non -disclosure. <laughs> yeah, but it's nothing controversial, nothing controversial. So, I'm just saying that in 1978, finance police came into his center, he had to sign them over the building and sign them over his bank account. He told me it was four million dollars in his bank account which he never saw again and they took over his mission he ended up 
at Flag in down there in Clearwater. Florida. Yeah, Clearwater. Yeah. And he slept on the beach every third night. He'd go get a seedy hotel room so he could bathe and shower. But he had no money, no income. And he actually ran into Bill Franks at some point who said, did you get your building back? And he said, no, I didn't. Bill Franks sent him to England, St. Hill, where he had a comev. He went through the conditions and he got his building back 1981. 1981, and then he goes into, okay. um, in 1982, before the mission holders meeting in San Francisco, Bill Franks had one with all the mission holders right. at the Sand Castle right. in Clearwater, where they were going to do this wonderful, everything was going to be great. Hubbard had put Bill Franks in charge of all Scientology. Yep. And then Miscavige bypassed everything, declared Dean Stokes suppressive. We have a photo of that outside the right. door when all these mission holders went into San Francisco and he lined up all the Sea Org officers there in front of the mission holders and yep. just took them down. Right. I mean, Miscavige. Yep. And, just and that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Miscavige was obviously false reporting to Hubbard as to where these mission holders stood creating yep. this. And even Mary Sue at that time was like, wait a minute, what's LRH being told? This is not how he has ever treated any mission holders because yeah, he and, always viewed them as the, they were the road into Scientology. They fed all the orgs and to destroy right. the mission network, you right. destroy all the organizations. And that's oh, yeah. why Hubbard always treated the mission holders with kid mm -hmm. gloves. And so they it was killed a the golden goose. They killed yes. the golden goose that laid the golden eggs. It was really yes. crazy. So so and when that happened, Miscavige that did that, right? Yes, it was yeah. Miscavige. Yeah. yeah. So when that happened, is that when Bent went? Well, I'm I'm going to go write, start writing a book. Is that what happened? I mean, because I remember his book came out shortly thereafter, right? It, well, he ended up twelve years in court fighting Scientology, eight court cases, with his wonderful lawyer Toby Plevin this lady that helped him and he won every court case he used to um, show up he used to show up at the gold base i remember who we were staffed he? there he yeah yeah he, <laughs> he would show up protesting out in front of out in front of it there were no gates in or anything <laughs> and, at that time and they, he would wasn't make allowed us stay in, they would make us stay in in the buildings and it was like, well, what's going on? Oh, Ben Corridan's out there, you know what I mean, causing a flaw, you know, a rust. And I don't blame him at all for what he's, they were so no. bad to him. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I'm just saying he was the original guy out there protesting, you know what I mean? People wow. are protesting now. Bent was out there years ago. And, yeah. um, of course, Riverside is just like literally 25 minutes away from the Gold Bay. Right. It's just not that right. far away. <laughs> well, I the reason I went to meet Bent 13 years ago was because mm -hmm. I really respected him for writing that book mm -hmm. and I wanted to support him and I'm still hanging in 13 years. <laughs> Can I ask it you a question? Worth it. Maybe you don't know the answer. How did he get a hold of Sarah uh, Hubbard's second wife? And, and I mean, did, did he, how did he know that? I mean, he obviously was smart, but I mean, uh, I'd never, we'd never well, heard he had of a lot of a lot of ahead, communication Jim. connections. All the uh -huh. other mission holders, they were all very much talking on the phone. Martin Samuels was a major person, a major friend for Bent, setting up his mission. He patterned it after Martin Samuels, who was totally demolished and disappeared, yeah. right? It's a, yeah, it's Mark, a real risky thing. Yeah. I just want to correct you. Sarah was not the second wife. There was no second wife. Oh, that's Hubbard. <laughs> You're joking when you say that, of course, right? But that's because there is an interview with Hubbard where he says there was no second wife. Oh, I know, when but he, he was married. Him. He was married to two women at the same time, right. Polly and Sarah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But that I'm just joking about it because yeah, yeah. yeah, he's married to Polly and then he married Sarah. And then when he, he was married to Mary Sue when he had the interview and they asked him about his second wife and he said there was no second wife. Mm -hmm. 
That's just right. skip from first to third. <laughs> just creating his own reality. It's out right, of sync with the real more. world. I'll show some more photos, yeah. more recent photos here. Hold on, I'm going to pull oh, the Greeks. We can talk about yeah, I was saying, yeah, I'm, we went to Greece. We had a great time. And I'm just going to pop these up, along. Janice, because they're not in order. So you can just start okay. talking about these people, okay? Lawyer. Well, this was probably this was probably 2016, where one of my reunions here in Vegas, from the left to right, uh, the left is Jill Steinberg. She was married to Steiny, who passed away a few years, a couple of years ago, Leon Steinberg. And then next to her with the cup in her hand, that's my sister, Terry. Looking at her is Candy. Yeah. And next to Candy is myself. And then next to me in, with the orange um, jacket is Liz Gable House. Right. And next to her is Lloyd, Lloyd Combs or Lloyd Young. Lloyd Young. That's, that's the one who had the code system with her mother. <laughs> and this is actually, the, this was the get together where they brought the mother with them, her and Bob. Oh, yes. Yeah. Candy, did you stay in touch with Loy um, over the years or was it like oh, you yeah. were just, yeah? No, I was only in touch with Loy. They followed me to Hawaii, she and Bob, when I moved home to Hawaii, 1977. They moved there and lived there for years in Hawaii. They were a few people that followed me home to Hawaii, um, but they're wonderful. They were just such Did you know Kim and Alan Walters I stayed in touch with, too. Did you know Kim and Michael Douglas? They were in Hawaii, too, right, Janice? Yeah, I never yeah. did. When I was in Hawaii visiting Kim and Michael, we went to, all of us went to Oahu together to go see Pearl Harbor, and Bob came and had dinner with us because yeah. he was there captaining uh, some ships around Hawaii. So uh, I have a picture of that of Bob and I at the dinner table. I wish I'd been in touch with Janice because David Mayo and his wife, the newer wife after Meryl, Julie. Uh, Julie. Were living on the North Shore, she told me after he passed. She said, they lived right on the North Shore when I was there living. And I was windsurfing and teaching surfing. And, and that's uh, what they were doing. Yeah, they, I know. They were Julie. windsurfing. David, David and David Julie. And Julie. Oh, yeah, yeah, they'd go windsurf and just go out onto the horizon to the point they couldn't even see land anymore. They Oh, they were big time into windsurfing. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Wow. Yeah. Well, did, he was did, from can... New Zealand. Bent's from New Zealand. And so right. they were really close friends, too. There's a lot of good Kiwis out here. Do you still right. live in Hawaii or, 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 or do you just you could go back and forth? I go there about every um, three times a year, hopefully four okay. times a year. Yeah. Okay. I'm living in California. <laughs> My and children with... are on the mainland. That's me with Terry Gleason. Again. Yeah. Bless his heart. That yeah. probably Terry. also was at that reunion, Janice. Right? That one or, or another one. Because Candy came yeah. to all of them. Yeah, and Carrie, yep. Carrie missed um, one of them, I think. I like the yeah, reunion yeah. where where I was chauffeuring. Jana said, "Would I chauffeur <laughs> Bill Franks around?" <laughs> but you had that Elvis impersonator in there. Oh, yeah. I missed I, that. I, I, I saw that, that was when you had the birthdays, Janice. That was a good one. Yes, yes, yeah. that was my birthday when Elvis, my sister, arranged <laughs> for Elvis impersonator to show up. That yeah, so but that that's yeah. Kerry Gleason, who was a you know longtime Sea Org executive and was kicked out as he was the executive director international. He was kicked out in 1982-83, and he just passed away uh, within the last year. And yeah. so yeah. yeah, he was a great guy. Yeah. Yep, and there's Candy with Karen De La Carrier and um, Aida Thomas. Yep. Are you was friends with the, them and do you stay in touch with them or is this at another reunion? So pretty you much as if we get together. Yeah. I think that's one of my reunions outside at the uh, Sun Coast. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's Spanky Taylor and uh, Tori Chrisman and Candy. And we're actually, actually, tomorrow we're doing the interview on Spanky. 
And then oh. the following week, Tori. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, Candy, did you know Spanky, uh, you know, at Celebrity Center when you when it first started, or was she there later? She wasn't there till later. I think okay. she might have been there when it was La Brea at La Brea. Okay. No, she was she was there on 8th Street because was when she? I showed up at 17, Spanky in 73, Spanky was yeah, there was and gone. took me to a Three Dog Night concert. Oh, I was gone in 72. Okay, yeah. There from 70, 71, 72. And that's Candy and I in Greece. We were oh. in Athens in front of Parliament. <laughs> Yay, I didn't recognize that. Yay. Yeah. Yep, that was you and me with the uh, the chief god. And that's and I Bent took and I this there. picture. I took this yeah. picture. It's a good one. <laughs> yep, I think that's in Catalonia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that Capilonia. blue ocean. Catalonia. Yeah. What is it? Yeah, that. It's a Greek island. Oh, okay. Yeah. We had a lot of fun, Janice. We yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, we 16 of us. It was so it was a lot of people, but we still had fun, you know, going around different places. And now, Roger Candy, Weller. You, <laughs> and Roger yeah. Weller was there. Yeah. yeah. We we <laughs> actually had a we actually had a one of those Who's that comedian? The um, the silly ones, um, British. Well, anyway, we had one of those moments where half the group was on a bus, and my cousin Miles is like, "Oh, this is our stop," and we all get off the bus, and he goes, "Nope, this isn't it." And we all get back on the bus, and we get to the next stop. Oh, this is it. So we all get off the bus. Nope, and we all get back on the bus, and then finally we get to the right stop, and then coming back. We end up on the same bus, and the guy's like, I'll tell you when to get off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Candy, after you left, you know, Scientology and all that, like, what, what did you do? Did you continue counseling all your life, or you started field, a family? Field, or what, field what, auditing. what did you do? Yeah. Field auditing. Uh -huh. I, I just worked with people, and then I did my cafe. I wanted to, it's a stupid thing to do, but I decided I'm leaving Scientology completely in 1975. So I opened a cafe on Fairfax called the Horn of Plenty. I ground my own flour fresh every day, everything from <laughs> scratch, all organic. Integrity, that's it. So now it Fairfax is in Los Angeles, good. right? Yeah, Fairfax yeah. Is in yeah. Hollywood. Angeles. Side, yeah. Mark, I think the photo of her with Roger wasn't that at oh, your yeah. restaurant? Yeah, yeah, that's in my kitchen. Yeah, Roger Weller. There. No, not yet. I got it. I think I saw Bent. Bent. Yeah, he, yeah, he did. Just he came by. by. Hello. There, that, one. Here. Back. that one. There we yes. are. That's me in the middle in my dancing dress in my kitchen i used to go outside if we got slow and i'd troll around and people would pull over and come on in and check it out we did really amazing things in there hi ben and there's and there's roger weller who knows everybody who's anybody yeah <laughs> yeah oh, and roger ben. here's ben roger says tom morgan to Ben. Tom oh, yeah, Morgan yeah, yeah, is yeah. the guy that got Ben into Scientology originally. Yeah. Every every morning when we were in Greece, Roger would see um, Ben and say, Tom Morgan, instead of good morning. It was Tom Morgan because that's oh. who got Ben in. Come down, Ben. Squat down. There we go. Hey, hey Ben. <laughs> your, hat, your hat is in the way of your eyes. Oh, there we are. There, there we go. go. <laughs> And they're they're actually visiting with me right now. They're on the yeah. other side of the house. <laughs> Last time we came, we were out in your pool and walked in on your your uh, interview. You were interviewing in the very beginning, Mark, when you yeah. and Janice were together. The, one of the first. Oh yeah, that's right. Times there's a, there's a picture in that group, Mark, with the one of them in the swimming pool. No, I don't. In those photos. Oh, you no, don't have I didn't it there. See that. No. Oh. Oh, okay. 
We're good, though. It's been wonderful. My pleasure meeting with you That's too. Great. It's just lovely. So, what are you doing these days? Are you just enjoying retirement, or you know, what's 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 going on? I'm still developing things. I did a second restaurant in mm -hmm. 2005 with my grown children. I'm a grandmother of four now. Wow. And uh, Ben has a grandson, so we're pretty busy visiting always. Where's and, the second uh, restaurant at? It was in Torrance. I bought it off Craigslist uh -huh. for 15000 moved me and my two grown kids to Torrance in a month, opened it up, boom, 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 15000 I sold it for $80,000 nine months later. That's great. I, my kids said, no, mom, this isn't for us. And they flew out of my nest. And as a single parent, I couldn't ever kick them out. So they went, bye, mom, bye, mom. And different, they went off into their own lives. And uh, okay. yeah, it's been great. All right. Well, anything else you want to, any other stories you want to tell or anything? Because we're, we're nearing the end here. Well, my cookbook's about to come out and be published. Oh, you cookbook. didn't tell me that. No, it's from the first restaurant, but we're publishing it. It's called the Horn of okay. Plenty Natural Eats Cookbook. And it's a wonderful person, this woman that came in and did all the illustrations and hand printed of all the women that were working in my restaurant because we got mobbed. I mean, it was just, it took off like, Wow, like that <laughs> for two years. Then I went home to take care of my dad who had Parkinson's. So I, oh. that's how I ended up back in Hawaii. She's but that's about, about it. We're just, there we go. Who's that? Whose book is this? Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it out of the light there. There. Oh, thank you. Elrond Hubbard, Messiah or Madman. And that's yeah, by and ben if somebody Carden. wants. Somebody wants to order the book, contact Janice at janicegillamgrady at gmail.com and she'll hook you up if you're interested in getting a copy of the book. Just send okay, an email right. to Janice at janicegillamgrady at uh, gmail.com. I think that was the first book that came out that was written by someone that had actually been in Scientology. The book oh, before it was. that book, they, they were written by people outside who'd never yeah, reporters and things like that. But you no, know, I remember yeah. when his book came out, like I said, it yeah. came out and uh, it was before Russell Miller's book or piece of blue sky or anything like that. Yep. That was bad. Yeah. You can't hear them because it's in my ears, yeah. <laughs> but we'll watch <laughs> this later. It's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. right. Well, we want to thank you for uh, joining Bend us. Uh, there you are. There's bent. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? He says. He's asking, How are you doing? Oh, That's doing Mark. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Living the best life. That's good. Yep. Shaka, take care. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up, Janice. Have you got anything else? I'm going to go ahead and do our business here. No, I'm good. Bye, everybody. Well, no, we're not uh, bye yet. Oh. So subscribe to our channel. <laughs> Hit the like button. What else do they rock have to do, Janice? Slam, rock slam the like button. <laughs> rock slam the like button. Yeah, rock slam it, right? Okay. Yeah, and then if you want to order one of Janice's, Janice has got two books, Commodus Janice's Messenger book, book One. Yeah. And then this is just Commodus Messenger Book Two. It's right down below. It's tagged in our products. You can get an autographed copy of each one of the books there. And you also can order them on Amazon. But uh, anyway, if you're interested, uh, her books are fantastic. So, and they tell, uh, have lots of photographs that Candy contributed as well. If you've got any yeah. questions or you want to ask us any, you know, any questions or comments or opinions, go down to the comments section. And then if you want to donate to our channel, you can buy us a coffee. There's a link in the description. Just click on it, follow the instructions. You can buy us one, two, three, five, ten, a 10, 100 coffees if you want to. Anyway, we appreciate any of the support. <laughs> Thank you. And now okay. we're now we're at the end. Okay. Now we so can say bye. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo. And Misha. Misha is saying Misha hello. Misha. Yep. <laughs> she knows right. it's time. We'll see you Thank later. You. Bye bye. Bye.